morning, everybody. Hello. My name is Jack Dangerman. I suppose if you don't know that, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke, but it didn't go over very well. Listen, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here on behalf of all of my colleagues. This is a very special group. You are a special group of people. And our purpose is simply to be together, to share what we know, to learn from each other's experiences. My purpose is to share with you some of what ESRI is working on in the technology area, and also share some of the work that you are doing yourselves. As I mentioned, you're a special organization, if I could call you an organization, a kind of network of GIS professionals from almost every agency in the federal government and also your colleagues in state and local and beyond. You're working on extraordinary problems. And how many of you have never been here before to this meeting? OK, so we have a tradition where at the beginning of this meeting, everybody stands up and they turn around and they introduce themselves to one other person to get this meeting going. So could you do that for me now, please? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. That's exactly what I want to have happen all week this week, is you sharing who you are, what you're doing, some of your work, learning from each other, reinforcing and building this network. Also at the beginning of this session, I like to share a little bit about your work. And many of you have shared some examples. I'm going to go through them very quickly. Clearly, you are working on virtually all the challenges that our country and the world is facing today. And your footprints are making a difference. Some of you are working in the world of environmental monitoring and assessment. Everything from climate change to looking at the movement and impact and increase and decline of insects like butterflies and bumblebees to the offshore world in the southwest in the United States looking at fishing and marine resources. These examples illustrate work in the area of forestry and agriculture and land management. And here we some, see some amazing examples. In the upper left, one of my favorite maps, is the recently published USGS data set of PADAS. These are all the protected lands for the United States. And the US Forest Service not only is continuing to work on patterns of change, but also doing forest restoration planning. And then there's this amazing map in the center showing offshore work. Actually, BOEM moving cadaster into the oceans. And also NOAA and others are looking at offshore suitability for aquaculture. These important issues of human health and seeing demographics and statistics are represented here. Opiate addiction and also opiate prescriptions done by two different agencies, interestingly enough. And we see in the upper left the patterns and variations of our veterans. And then looking at everything from public school information to the rate and risk of Zika as it moves across America. You, our users, are working in the field of transportation, planning and management, helping improve transit access and public transit itself. I'm particularly fascinated by the two maps in the lower center, one by the US Post Office, who has saved enormous amounts of money through routing and scheduling of postal delivery. And the peak day of last Christmas, they shipped over 5 million packages, all on time, using GIS as a foundation. And UPS, its corollary in the private sector, saved over $400 million last year by using GIS as a platform for routing and scheduling. GIS is moving into buildings and campuses, major federal facilities like DOE in Sandia, or in universities 
or even into interior of buildings like space arrangement or optimizing space utilization. And in the world of public safety and security, your work is clearly making our nation, our cities, our regions a safer place by focusing in on things like, like the inauguration a few weeks ago or seeing patterns and rates and risk of things like violence, hot spots of terrorism, etc. Here my favorite map is the lower right from Louisiana showing space-time patterns and analytics, hot spots in space and time. And in the world of defense, many examples, collaborative training in Europe between NATO and U.S. forces, managing water resources and doing analytics, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and on and on, providing situation awareness and better understanding of bases. GIS is playing a major role in preparing for and responding to disasters. And we see this not just within FEMA, but across all of the federal agencies as well as state and local. Assessing situations, providing now through the Weather Service, instant real-time access to what's going on, but also predictions. And we'll see more of this during the day. And in the world of mapping, one of my favorite. Today, USGS has a complete digital database of features for the entire United States, and they're serving these out on the web with on-demand mapping services. And NOAA, automating navigation charts, but also providing navigation safety. And then there's the aeronautical stuff. So I say, the land, the water, the air. <laughs> it's GIS-based. But I'd like to call your attention here to NGA, who have now completed a feature foundation database for the entire world. Two billion features in a geodatabase. Updated 100,000 features, new features every month. This is about two features a minute. Does this get you excited? Okay, I'm a little weird, but I, I'm quite ex yeah. impressed by this accomplishment because not only are they producing the traditional maps and, and the other corollaries here domestically and charts graphically, but also have transformed these organizations into database-driven charting and graphing. Our users are increasingly leveraging the power of imagery and LIDAR and raster analytics. In the scientific domain, for example, these in the upper left by NASA, also the private sector, organizations like Digital Globe, is making their huge multi-petabyte libraries available as web services for GIS users. Here my favorite map is in the lower right, however, showing Clark Labs and the forecast for land use change, land cover change, 10, 20, 30 years out. This is a dazzling piece of spatial analysis work. Our users continue to use the platform to reach citizens with open data and portals, not only between government and citizens, but also between government and government agencies. Census Bureau just revised their new small business assistance program where they have all kinds of geospatial data sets available for little businesses who are wanting to get started and get the geographic advantage located in the right spot. This is really a very popular site and communicates to me deeply the value of extending the basic measurement data to help citizens and businesses. And we're seeing in Canada, in the Forest Service, across the United States, Army Corps of Engineers, these open portals that are sharing data. And today we have a special visitor from Ireland, the director of the Ireland uh, Ordnance Survey, who has opened up their data, not only from, for government to government sharing of information, but also to their citizens. All of these maps and examples, and by the way, thank you for all of those who have shared these maps with me and stories. I've been looking at them and fascinated in the last couple of weeks. 
we are also seeing a transformation of storytelling through story maps. These are a few examples of them. I won't go into them, but I'll simply mention that today, three or four hundred new story maps will be authored. Today, over 25 million views of these story maps will happen. We are, you are, I would say, opening up your geographic knowledge and sharing it through the web with this new kind of template. All of these are worth acknowledging. And yet, some of you, actually, some of you students, entered into a competition last fall in terms of an ESRI-sponsored competition. Let me explain it a little more better. Uh, more better. I'm fumbling this up better, <laughs> worse. I'm getting into a hole here, but look. Last fall, ESRI started a competition for using the living atlas data in story maps to tell important stories around the world. And these winners, Alicia, Claudia, Sarah, won this competition. They're examples of people who have made use of the billion dollars or so of open spatial information that are available in the open web. Each year, each year we give an award to the best organization, or I would simply say a distinguished organization, uh, for making a difference in our country. And this year, I'm very pleased to acknowledge the Department of Homeland Security, the Geospatial Center, and David Lilly, I think he's maybe here. David, could you join us here in uh, getting this award? David. <laughs> How are you? Very, very welcome. Thank you. We're going to take a photo with somebody. David, do you want to say anything? I do. Thank you, sir. Are you nervous? A little bit. Not Thank as nervous know. as me. I mean, really. We'll see how <laughs> but, we do. Okay. Anyway, yeah. congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yes. Well, so thank you, sir. Um, what I'd like to say about this award is it's special because it represents the hard work of so many. From the DHS components who have GIOs and geospatial subject matter experts working every day on the front line, to our industry partners, to our interagency partners at DOD, DOJ, HHS, the Army Geospatial Center, to the leadership at CIO within DHS, a phenomenal cast of leadership that understands not only this community, but overall the importance of information sharing. So this award to me really is reflective of the power of partnerships. And I think that's what our community is about. Exactly. So I just want to say thank you to you, thank you and thank you to the community for all your hard work and partnerships. Thank you, David. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to think about what David said, the power of partnerships. Because certainly geography, GIS, the ability to integrate, demonstrate explicitly how things are interconnected in our world is so important. And DHS has certainly played a major role. I'd simply say you have saved lives, you have made a huge impact and difference across the whole government.